All right, what we're going to do today is this. We're going to look at functions on a table. Okay? And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our functions that we're given and make sure that it matches with the table that we have, or we're going to be given a function and write the, tab write the table or complete the table. All right, so functions on a table. So if we go back, we wrote an equation in y equals mx plus b form. Okay? This was slope-intercept form, all right? M is your slope, X is your variable or X value, B is your Y-intercept, Y is your Y value, okay? So we're going to go back to that, all right? We understand that M, when we talked about slope, that's also a rate of change, okay? So M, again, is your rate of change. And B is your initial value or where you start. Okay, so I have a couple equations. The first equation I have for you is this, or first function, is y equals 5x plus 4. Okay, so how I complete this table is I do the following. I'm going to have an x and I'm going to have a y. Basically what's going to happen is this. I'm going to put a value in for x and I'm going to, fig going to figure out what y is equal to. All right, so for the first one here, I'm going to put a 0 in for x, and when I put a 0 in for x, I get 0 times 5 plus 4, which gives me a value of 4. Now I'm going to put a 1 in for x. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9. I'm going to put a 2 in for x. 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 4 is 14. Now I'm going to put a 3 in for x. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 4 is 19. Now, a couple things. I need to look for the rate of change and the initial value. Both of those will appear in my table. So exactly where does it appear? So first thing I'm going to look for is my rate of change, my 5. Where I look for my rate of change is, is the pattern that is occurring and why. So I'm going to look at here and I'm going to look for the pattern. So if I take a look here, I know that my rate of change is 5. And it's going to appear over here. So if I look from 4 to 9, it went up by 5. From 9 to 14, it went up by 5. From 14 to 19, it went up by 5. So if you take a look, my plus 5 or my rate of change showed up here in the pattern. So if you're looking for the rate of change, you're looking for that pattern in the Y. Okay. Now, where do you find the initial value? The initial value can be found where x is 0. So wherever x is 0, you can find the initial value. So I look for where x is 0, and in this case, I find the initial value of 4. Okay. So because x is 0, I can find now the initial value or where it started was 4. All right. Let me show you another one. y equals negative 3x. Again, I'm going to create an xy table. I'm going to start it at 0. <laughs> I'm going to go to 1, 2, and 3. I put a 0 in here, I get 0. I put a 1 in here, I get negative 3. I get a 2 in, I get a negative 6. I get a 3 in, I, put a, I get a negative 9. Okay. All I did is substitute these numbers into this equation. Okay. Ooh. Sorry. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I want to find the rate of change and the initial value. Here's my rate of change in the equation. Now let's find the rate of change from a table. So I look at the pattern. What's occurring here? From 0 to 3, it went down 3. So I'm going to put a negative 3. From negative 3 to negative 6, it went down 3. From negative 6 to negative 9, it went down 3. So again, notice how my rate of change incurred in the pattern that you see over here. Okay. My initial value, there is nothing I'm adding or subtracting, okay, in this one. So there doesn't appear to be an initial value. But if I look at my table here, I can find the initial value because I'm going to look for where x is 0. So I'm going to try to find out where x is 0. I see that x is 0 right here. So to find the initial value in this one, I look at the y. And so the y was 0. So just a quick review again. The rate of change in the first problem, whoops was equal to 5. The initial value was a 4. 
In this one, the rate of change, whoop, was a negative three because that was the pattern. And my initial value was a zero because that's when x was zero. Okay? All right. Look at another one. So I don't know if you know about this, but the first Japanese train, high-speed train, traveled at 140 miles per hour. I have three tables down here. One of these tables matches this equation, okay? So if I look at this equation, I understand, I need to understand that the rate of change in this equation is 140. So the rate of change is equal to 140. The initial value, there is no number that I'm adding or subtracting. So the initial value in this one is zero, okay? So I'm going to look at these tables, and I'm going to find where there's an initial value or a rate of change of 140 and an initial value of zero, okay? So I'm going to look at this. So I'm going to look at the first one, and I'm going to look for this pattern in the rate of change. So I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to look for the rate of change. Again, what I'm looking for is 140. 140 to 340 is 200. 340 to 540 is 200. 140 to 280 is 140. 280 to 420 is 140. This one, there's 180 to 320, which is 140. 320 to 460 is 140. So immediately, I can eliminate one of my answers. The first answer I'm going to eliminate is this one right here, because the rate of change is 200. And because the rate of change is 200, I can eliminate that one. So that is not the correct table. Whereas if I look at the other examples, I see that the rate of change for both tables is 140. So both of those have a rate of change of 140. So which means I need to find the initial value of zero. Unfortunately, my table does not have a zero in this domain. So what I need to do is I need to figure it out. So how would I do that? Is I would go backwards from one to zero. So if I think about that, I might just make another line right here and another line right here. I'm going to go backwards 140, okay? So I'm going to make that one zero. I'm going to go backwards 140 on this one. So if I go backwards 140 from 140, I end up with zero. If I go backwards 140 from 180, I end up with 40. So now if I look for the initial value, and the initial value is where x is zero, Okay, notice that now both of them have where the domain is zero. Okay, so now I'm looking for where the initial value was zero. So which one of these has an initial value of zero? It would be this one right here. This one has an initial value of 40, so this one is incorrect. Okay, let's look at one last example. This one's about a birthday uh, bowling alley that offers a birthday package. Okay. It says the bowling alley offers a different birthday party pack packages. Package A offers the, the function C equals 7P plus 5, e where C is the total cost and P is the number of people. So this is going to be my number of people. This is going to be my total cost because it's dependent on how many people there are. So if I look at this, what's my rate of change from the problem? The rate of change can be found right here. It's the 7. What's the initial value? The initial value in this one is 5. Okay. So what I would do is, I, since I'm, I'm creating this table, I would go ahead and start at 0, and then I would find 1, and then 2, and I could keep finding for longer. So when I put a 0 into this equation, I put a 0 in for people, I see that the total cost is $5, All right, which matches my initial value of 5. When I have one person show up, 7 times 1 is 7, 7 plus 5 is 12. So I need to have that pattern of plus 7. So I need to have another pattern of plus 7. So that means if I do 12 plus 7, I get 19. All right? Good luck with rate of change and initial value.